The brother asked a very good question, very important question, that he wants to know one thing which has been always in his mind. What is the definition of Allah and Islam? And the definition also includes many things which is negation, and it contradicts the definition of the other faiths. In fact, in Islam, the definition of Allah says what Allah is and also says what Allah is not. Besides knowing what God is, it is also important to know what God is not. So that if someone falsely claims that so-and-so is God, you can easily come to know this is a false claim. As far as the reply to what is the definition of Allah, the best reply that any Muslim can give you is from the Quran, from Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allahu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kuffanad. There is nothing like him. This is a four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, given in the glorious Quran. This is the touchstone of theology. It is the litmus test to identify any person says so-and-so candidate is God. If that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate to be God. The first is, Qul hu Allah ahad. Say it's Allah one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yilad wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kufanad. There is nothing like him. For example, I'll give you an example. There are some human beings who say that Bhagwan Rajneesh is God. During question and answer time, there was a Hindu brother who told me that if Hindus don't consider him to be God, I never said that the Hindus call Bhagwan Rajneesh to be God. There are many human beings who claim Bhagwan Rajneesh is God. Now I will give you a sample. Why do we use this negative also? Like say is Allah one and only is positive. Allah samad, Allah the absolute eternal. Lam yalad wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Why do we use this? Now we'll put this Bhagwan Rajneesh to test. The first test is, Qul Allah was. Say it's Allah one only. Was Bhagwan Rajneesh one and only? Was he the only man who has claimed divinity? There are hundreds who have claimed divinity. And in this country of ours, India, there are thousands of men who have claimed divinity. Thousands of people have said that they are God. He's not the only one. But Rajneesh Bhakt will say, no, Bhagwan Rajneesh is unique. So let's go to the next test. Allah Samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Was Rajneesh absolute and eternal? When we read his autobiography, we read there that Bhagwan Rajneesh, he was suffering from asthma, from diabetes mellitus, from chronic backache. Imagine Almighty God suffering from asthma, from diabetes mellitus, from chronic backache. The third test, Lam Yulid Lam Yulad. He begets not noise begotten. We know Bhagwan Rajneesh, he was born in Madhya Pradesh, and he had a mother and father. And in 1981, he goes to America and takes thousands of Americans for a ride. And in the state of Oregon, he starts his new center known as Rajnishpuram. Later on, the American government arrests him and puts him behind bars. Rajnish alleges that the American government gave me slow poisoning. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. And 1985, the American government kicks him out of the country. He comes back to India and goes back to the city of Pune. And there, he goes and restarts his center, which is today called as Osho Commune. And if you visit Osho Commune today, if you go to a Samadhi, where his ashes have been kept after he died, it is mentioned over there on a Samadhi, on a stone, Osho. Bhagwan Rajnish, oh show, never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. Never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention on his samadhi that he was not given visas to 21 different countries of the world. Imagine Almighty God coming on this earth to visit different countries and requires visas. And the last test, walam kufanad, is so stringent that the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. Walam kufanad. We know Bhagavan Rajnish. He had a white beard. Like the human beings, he had two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two hands, 
the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. For example, someone says that the Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You may have heard the name of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the person who got the title Mr. World, strongest man in the world, Mr. Universe, the strongest man in the universe. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dara Singh or King Kong, whether it be a thousand times or million times, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. So this brother is, in short, the concept of Almighty God. As far as the second part of the question is concerned, that why does it contradict with the concept of God in other religions? In fact, it's a misconception that the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, it contradicts with the other religions. It contradicts against the practices of the other religion, I agree with you, but does not contradict against the other religious scriptures. Because unfortunately, the followers of most of the religions, whether it be Christianity, Hinduism, etc., they do not read their own scriptures. So if we analyze the practices of the non-Muslims, it does contradict. But if you go back to the scripture, if you have to understand the concept of God in any religion, the best is to try and find out what that scripture of that religion has to speak about God. Don't try and find out the concept of God by observing what the followers of the religions do. For example, if you want to know the concept of God in Sikhism, the best place you can go is Guru Granth Sahib, Adi Granth. If you read the first volume, first chapter, first verse of Guru Granth Sahib, it is known as Japuji. What does it say? Correct, known as Japuji. It says that God is one. He is called the true. He is called as eternal. He is existent. He is compassionate. He is free from fear and want. And if you know in Sikhism, Sikhism believes in one God. It does not believe in idol worship. It does not believe in Autarvada. And in the manifest form, he is called as Ekomkara. And unmanifest form, he is called as Omkara. And if you read the scriptures of Sikhism, there are various attributes given to Almighty God. If you read the six scriptures, Almighty God, he is called as Satanama. He is called as Holy Name. He is called as Kartar, the Creator. He is called as Rahim, Merciful. He is called as Kareem, Beneficent. He is also called as Wahe Guru, the one true God. So if you go back to the scripture, the concept of God in Sikhism and Islam is the same. Similarly, if you go to Hinduism, in Hinduism also, if you go back to the Hindu scriptures, it's clearly mentioned in the Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, Ekkam Evidityam, God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Sveta Sita Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine, Nacha Sekasij, Janita Na Chadipa, of that God, there are no parents. He has got no superior. He has got no Lord. It's mentioned in Sveta Sita Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19, as well as Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number three, Na Trasya Pratima Asti, of that God, there is no Pratima. Pratima in Sanskrit means, it means an image, a photograph, a painting, a picture, a portrait, an idol, a statue, a sculpture. So it says, Na Tasya Patima Asti, of that God, there is no image, there is no painting, there is no portrait, there is no photograph, no sculpture, no idol, no statue. But unfortunately, yet you find that Hindus are doing idol worship. Who's to blame? I'm quoting the Vedas. Vedas is the highest authority amongst all the Hindu scriptures. But yet you find that Hindus do idol worship. Why? Because the scholars of Hinduism, they tell that, see, Brother Zakir, you know, at the lower level, people don't understand, so for concentration, we require the idol. When we reach a higher level of consciousness, then idol is not required. So I tell this Hindu Pandit, we Muslims have already reached the higher level of consciousness. <laughs> it is the basis of Hinduism. Basis of Vedas, but there are some sects in Hinduism, like Arya Samaj, which completely denounce idol worship. So similarly, if you go to Christianity, if you read the Christian scriptures, Christian scriptures are against idol worship. Yet you find that the Catholics, they make an image of God, and they say, Jesus Christ, peace be upon the Almighty God. 
So what we realize that if you go